realize it was 18 degrees this morning when I got here. And uh, while I have not ran into any cold or weather too cold that I can't do electrical, it is getting cold where I can't, I don't want to do the HVAC this way. And since I'm installing all of the trunk lines, and lateral lines for HVAC, I need it to heat up a little bit more for the pace that you have to put around stuff. And just for my own comfort, like today was just a little bit colder than I wanted it to be. So luckily I have all this Visqueen, we're gonna kind of cover these windows. It'll help, it'll work, just watch. I know many of you probably already have ladders. If not, I will link the ladder I like. But this little step stool, it is worth every penny. They are significantly more money now than they used to be, but uh, man, they were perfect back in the day. Now I know somebody's probably thinking, Joel, why not just tie back the house and seal it that way because you have to wrap it anyway. Good question class. The house has to have a shear inspection where they'll come and inspect all of the nailing on the house to verify it's okay. And if you put the wrap on there too soon, um, they can't do that. They'll make you tear it down and then you'll have to redo it. So I don't want to put the cart before the horse on that project, but since I have leftover visqueen from our vapor barrier underneath this, um, it's going to work perfect. So whenever you're laying flooring, you run into a problem. You pick kind of your longest run to be your straight line. And that means you can pound into the tongue um, really easily. You use this blunt edge to hit because you're not gonna mar it up. But the other half of the floor, you're pounding on the tongue edge. So typically you'll just cut a line on both and then flip it around. So then you have a butt joint right there so we came up with the idea of taking the router and routering it routering in a quarter of an inch so that tongue can actually go opposite and now we just created our own groove for the tongue what was cool was these guys were like what size is that router bit because i'm going to do that next time So I'm asking the guys how they figured out their angles. We know that the roof is 13 because that's what the plans say, but I wanted to know how they figured out their cut lines and what they do. So this is what he does. He puts the board on flush because we have room here, he says, and then he makes a mark against that. Then you bring your board down. He puts his speed square on the line that he made. And right here, it shows that it's 12 and a half, roughly 13. On his speed square, he has common rafter conversions. So you go to 13 and then it says 47.5, 47 and a quarter is what your bevel cut's gonna be. So now he brings his saw over to 47 and a quarter, sets the bevel, and then when he cuts this, it's gonna match it perfectly to that angle. So these guys say when they typically, if they're doing a straight cut, just a 90 degree cut, they'll use their square as kind of a straight guide along with the line that they've got. But when they do the bevel cut, they don't use the square because they say it, for some reason, veers. So it's all by hand and eyeball. <laughs> that board that they just measured and cut with the bevel cut. Look how tight that is all the way up. That's pretty dang amazing.
not me making first tracks down to the house today. We got about six or eight inches of snow last night. And there is so much snow. It is so deep. <laughs> Holy cow. I like that the wind blows this part off, to be honest. Oh my gosh. But it also means it blows it right into this corner and it is deep. Oh, it's so deep. Tomorrow is truss flying day. We are flying all of the trusses that are gonna go on top of the garage and as many as we can get everywhere else because a lot of that has to be hand framed. But besides the point, that crane weighs a ton and he's nervous coming down this driveway. And since we've seen in the past where trucks have tipped over, um, he's really nervous about sliding and tipping over what is surely the worst side. It's about a 15 to 16 foot drop, even more maybe at the worst spot on this. So luckily we've got this Polaris Ranger loaded with ice melt full of magnesium. I bought the heavier dose of magnesium because it will stay in the rocks longer and it will keep the new snow and ice a little bit more melted. So as it comes down, it stays on. So if you ever are driving around in the wintertime in Utah, sometimes you'll see that they've gone around and wet the streets before a storm and that's what they're pouring out there is a magnesium and probably some other ingredients mixed, but that's what they're doing. What is crazy is to see how fast this is working. All these little pinholes you're seeing is that ice melt already getting down in and melting. And it sits on that surface of rock and it creates a melted surface there. I know you guys remember the three, four, five rule or Pythagorean theorem that we went over when we talked about layout of the house to make sure it was square, but they just used it right here as well so that they can secure this so that when they fly this whole thing tomorrow, it's already square, it's not going anywhere, and it's ready for installation and it's perfectly square in that corner already. He says he forgets all the time, so he tattooed it to his arm. Show me, show me, never show me, forget. Show me, show me. Look at this. So I have to call him over every 10 minutes. What's that rule again? <laughs> the guys assembled most of these trusses that are gonna go in the garage. This part's gonna go in the garage as well, but they assembled a lot of this in place so that we can just lift it up as one unit and we don't have to do assembling up in the air. So they were able to do it on the ground, safe, secure, no problems. And it just makes it so much faster. There's already plenty we have to do up above the garage but having the crane come in and lift these as one piece is just, that was clutch. That was clutch. His big concerns here is because of the weight and outrigging and how far of a reach it is, he's worried about this outrigger coming down into soft stuff. And luckily we did excavate a ton here, but right up where he's at is kind of untouched area. And it's been really well compacted because of the 400 plus yards we moved in the back of One thing the guys did last night was they went around and did layout. So they've already got all their tick marks already set and prepped. So it's literally a set, nail, and move on. There's no seat belt for this ride. 
This is the heavy one because it's not a ton of weight. Ultimately, the crane can lift way more weight than that. The problem is, is the crane has to get out really far over to that side of the house. And once the crane starts tipping, its weight is reduced to how much it can hold and stay balanced. And if by chance that guy comes down, it's coming through the roof. Probably, I bet it'd go through that whole cement basement. is right here this roof line there is a chalk line that they are going off of and then they will go into it so this will be a straight cut on this edge but then it goes in and it has to create both angles the angle of the roof and then the pitch of the roof as well crazy 